freedom, America and shit. Well, I made it to Rapid City, six days late. And uh, it's been a long time. A lot has changed since I've uh, been here. I'm at Canyon Lake Park right now. This place has some significant memories for me. So I came here to kinda, you know, the way a motherfucker goes in the graveyard to mourn, it's kinda, one of those type situations. But, uh, I don't know. Um, I was expecting it to be a little bit more vibrant. Uh, I started out in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Um, and then they deadheaded me over here because there's no freight to be had anywhere. And I can see why. Um, despite the state being fully open, there's still a large number of weird closures and a lot of businesses that aren't open. Um, and the ones that are are like fucking ghost towns, a lot of them. Like, you know, when I, when I was here all those years ago, it, there was just so many crowds, so many like restaurants that I've gone to here, some of which don't exist anymore here. I don't know if the economy was having a hard time before the, the virus hit, but it's definitely going to have a fucking hard time now. Um, I just, you know, I feel bad that how far it's declined since I was here so many years ago. And this virus shit's only making it worse. Um, Sioux Falls, there was a lot of motherfuckers. It was crowded everywhere. Like every business that was open had shit tons of people, none of which met wearing masks. Like one in like 10 was wearing a mask in uh, South Dakota. So people aren't scared to go out. They're, as far as the masks go, it's not a thing here. Um, workers obviously are wearing them, but they're taking them off just as much as they're wearing them because wearing a mask sucks. So the new normal is a climate of fear, I believe. Now I haven't fully, this is like day one of my home time, so I'm sure my opinion will evolve. I do know that there is a bar open, <laughs> at, literally at the truck stop, and a casino, and I think casinos are open. I might go to Deadwood and check that out and see how that is this evening. Um, but I find that just because a place is open doesn't mean people are going to show up. It doesn't bode well for the economy. Like, freight has been obscene. Like, I sat for fucking three days in Nebraska. And then I was pretty much deadheaded. And, you know, they had me pick up a, an empty trailer that some, somebody had left in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And then they let me deadhead home from there. So that's like 600 miles without anything in the fucking trailer, which I know isn't very sustainable for trucking. Um, I'm thankful they got me home late as it was. By home, I mean wherever the hell I decide to stop. Just so happens to be Rapid City right now, but it could change anywhere. But after kind of seeing how it is here, and it's nothing like I remember in terms of, I don't know, the good things, like the vibrance of the economy, the, you know, I don't know what's changed. I'll continue to explore. Right now I'm just kind of revisiting a lot of my old haunts, a lot of my old places, remembering things. Some things are still here, some things aren't. Canyon Lake Park's still here though, so there's that. I've decided to not become a South Dakota resident, though it would save me tax money. 
I'm finding it was pretty easy for me to rent a car. Um, I'm, I'm learning about more of these gig economy apps like Airbnb and, uh, you know, being able to rent a car and stuff like that. And you know what? I think as far as my nomadic life goes, that I'm going to do some shit like that, you know. I'm probably going to... I'm probably going to try and... There's this is like a bird shit minefield. Some shit. Hold on. Let's walk out to this motherfucker over here. So I'm probably going to still travel, still do my nomadic thing full time. But I guess I'll keep sending my tithe to Emperor Cuomo and uh, maintain that as my home base. I don't quite fear, feel comfortable enough with what I've seen here to make this my secondary home base from New York. I do want a secondary home base that gives me some flexibility. Um, I'm still going to stand the Prius up so that I can do anything on the East Coast with it that I desire. So much fucking shit on this little, uh, whatever the hell this is. Like, like I'm getting bird flu. It's like a minefield. <laughs> I don't think there's any COVID-19 in this shit. That's, it's pretty gross. <laughs> Like, piles of the shit. What have they been eating? Like, I'm gonna stand on the end of this. Just to kind of be in the, in the lake and shit. Definitely, I've reevaluated my state of residency change, and at this time, I don't feel a need to do that. I got to I gotta move because the wind is probably, even with the wind muff on my shit, it's probably not doing too well. Um, so I, I've decided that a residency change, while financially advantageous, probably would be more trouble than it's worth. I've looked into it. Now I can tell you what I've looked into since I'm not planning on following through. I initially was going to relocate my personal vehicle either here or in Denver, Colorado because um, it's easier to get to Denver freight-wise whereas here seems to be a fucking nightmare. Even in the best times I remember every time I've tried to come through here in a truck it just wasn't working out in terms of uh, freight and I know the company is not going to do continuously you know spend 600 fucking miles worth of fuel to get me to my home time location I'm really impressed that they did they could have been like fuck you we can't get you there sorry try something else but they got me here and uh, getting out of here is going to be a questionable thing too uh, we'll see how that goes I realize I'm really backlit, but I don't know. I'll have to uh, continue to travel. This is one of my, it's still one of my go-tos for spending time though. So I will, this isn't my last time here. I, I just think next time I'm going to go to Denver, rent a car and drive up here. Cause it's only five, six hour drive from Denver during my time off, maybe hotel or Airbnb or one of these other fucking I'm starting to learn a lot more about some of the apps that uh, travelers use out here and I'm gonna try using them a little bit more and shit looks like another group wants to come down here so I'm gonna social distance my fucking fat ass out of here yeah I'm still not keto still fat as fuck it's a thing I'm out of the ship minefield now, so that's, that's there's that and shit. Hello.
How's it going? So, I'm still gonna be a, a resident and shit. So there's that. Dude was staring at me hard, hard for vlogging. I think people have been used to this shit by now. I am kind of enjoying, I don't know if you noticed my vlog setup lately has, has shifted a bit. I'm using the Osmo Pocket, but instead of worrying about ND filters, I'm just filming at 60 frames a second and publishing at 60 frames a second so that while it looks very soap opera-y, it, it, the, the motion isn't choppy. So, you know, that way I don't have to fuck with ND filters. I'll just film at 4K 60 on this and uh, on my uh, GH5 when I use it, which I'll be taking up. I plan on hitting Crazy Horse. I plan on hitting Mount Rushmore and Deadwood while I'm here. So lots to do. It's just Rapid City itself, I feel like has declined since I was here. Um, as far as the economy goes and things to do. Um, a lot of the roads are tore up, a lot of, I don't know. I just, I, just, I kind of feel bad, you know, it's, I hope they turn it around at some point. I'm not sure why the economy is taking the turn it has here um, since I was here. I don't know, did the base downsize? You know, because I know that Ellsworth Air Force Base is a big, uh, a big part of the economy here. So I don't, it was when I was here anyway. But I'm seeing some signs of, of poverty going on here. Um, there's a lot of people living in vehicles at the truck stop. And they don't look like they enjoy it. They don't look like the fucking YouTubers you see. They're all like, you know, I'm living in my vehicle. It's great. You know, um, they look like the, I lost my house and my job and I'm trying to pass the time in my car types. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. Got to do what you got to do in these hard economic times. And I'm definitely not above living in a vehicle if the shit hits a fan. Thankfully, I've got a paid off vehicle I can do that in. So, there'll still be Prius camping, but it's going to be on the East Coast, and out here it's going to be all truck and car rentals and Airbnbs and hotels if I want to do that, which I'm not going to do a lot of that. I'm still going to spend as little money as I can get away with, because um, I'm sleeping in the truck on this trip, too. So... The truck's my base, so I'm only really paying to be here, gas and car rental. Um, I'm gonna try out my generator for the first time tonight. We'll see how that goes. I might film that a little bit. Um, you know, I did buy a generator instead of the battery solar system that I was gonna get, which is more expensive. Would have been like 1,300 bucks, whereas the generator's 600, and gas is really cheap for it, and it. Can get 10 hours on a tank and the tank's 1.4 gallons or something like that so it's really kind of cost effective and there's always fuel at the truck stops for me to keep it fueled it's just a matter of how clunky it is to store and how you gotta set it up each time and tear it down and it's kind of a pain in the ass that way so yeah there's that So, overall, I'm not, like, disappointed that I came to South Dakota. It is not locked down in the sense that I could get arrested for sitting on this fucking picnic table and hanging out in the park and not wearing a mask or not social distancing. Um, I find that people aren't as asshole about it here. Uh, I feel like the people that are really scared here are staying inside, are wearing a mask. Um, just because there's not a lot of people out. And granted, it's Monday. So, that could be a factor too. I kind of, it's it's kind of depressing. The, the way things are here. So, 
I, I will continue to explore some of my old haunts to start with and then uh, do the touristy shit starting tomorrow, which is Mount Rushmore. I'm going to try and tackle Mount Rushmore and Crazy Horse tomorrow. Um, I'm going to make a, like a backpacking thing. And then, uh, I don't know, I might do some hiking. I don't, we'll see. I'm going to I'm gonna start with Mount Rushmore, then do Crazy Horse. And then if there's time, I might hike one of the trails. I only have the car till Wednesday. So, I don't know. It's, it's kind of later in the day right now for me to be... And I did want to spend a day just kind of going through Rapid City, going out near the base, and just kind of looking around to all the places I used to go, all the places I used to hang out. You know, it's kind of like memory lane and shit. So... It is windy as fuck here. I don't even know if my wind muff thingy works this good. So, it's not as quite as fucking warm as I'd like it either, but it is South Dakota. You're not going to get super warm here all the time. But, we'll see. We'll see if I can enjoy this. As far as stores, though, I went into the mall. There was like five or six stores open and you can tell they're the like the mom and pop types that are mainly open um the chinese food place was open i almost i almost did it too i was like should i have some chinese food i haven't had chinese food in fucking years since i've been keto so i thought about it just because they were open it's ironic in a way Went to a coffee shop, a local coffee shop downtown here, um, just to get some decent coffee. It was okay. I was able to get my heavy cream in it, with, like I like. Had to empty out my cooler today, um, and I'm waiting to restock it, so I'm pretty much floating without any perishable food on the truck for a few days. I might restock it Wednesday before I turn the car back in. So, yeah, this is probably all going to be one big fucking video that I, I do here. Say, so I'm a video. You guys are way behind the curve, too, on my publishing. Because you're, I'm t while I'm recording this now, I still have to post my LBRY video that I did when I was stuck in uh, Nebraska. But, anyways, let's see what else I can get into out here. Reliving some Air Force memories. I can't, I don't think I can go on base for anything. I don't know if I can visit or whatnot. I didn't try. Um, so I stopped at the next best thing. I already saw one of the B1s take off, which was on my list of shit to do while I was here, literally while I was pulling in to check out Box Elder, which used to be a bustling hub of activity. But they made some changes to the base. Like the gate, the, there's like one gate here that's closed now. And I don't know if this other gate behind me is open. I think it is. Um, but they took the on-ramps off of the interstate that access this. And essentially, from the looks of it, killed Box Elder's commercial area. Like they used to have a truck stop, a McDonald's, and all of that. Well, now they got another exit further down the highway that has a Love's. So I think that's the new commercial hub, but literally everything here is dead or dying, you know, except for the Air and Space Museum. So let, let's, let's fucking take a look. So, and I'll show you the plane I used to work on for those of you who don't know me from those days. The little, they gave me the smallest fucking car fucking that they could find. So yeah, there it is, the, the B-1 bummer that I used to work on. God, that was so long ago. So let's, let's look around at the, this is 100% free by the way. So 
if you're ever here and you want to look at fucking planes that are just kind of sitting out here with placards telling you what the hell they are, then uh, I recommend the Air and Space Museum. So windy. I forgot how windy South Dakota was. So it used to be a missile base as well. But that was way before my days. Aircraft 6-7. That I think this might have been one of the ones that we used to can parts of off of. There it is. I don't know if I'm supposed to walk up here, but I'm walking up here. Lots of memories, lots of memories. So this gate's still open apparently. So it's pretty much just because they took the exit off the highway and moved it. Got a pretty good view of the base from here too. So that base housing was never there when that's new. They built that long after I left. I was hoping I'd see another B-1 takeoff. I don't hear one running though. They got one in the air, so. Over there's the dorms I used to live in. I sometimes find myself missing those days. I, I, I really do. It's a different world entirely. Sometimes. Then there's other times I'm like, no, don't want to be there again. But it was a more like stable life. You know? Not a lot of freedom. And it's probably where I formed my oppositional defiance disorder. So, there's that. But, I don't know. I wonder what would have happened if I'd have managed to stay in 20 years. But fortunately, I guess I got fat and uh, couldn't do my 20. So, I only did 10. I do believe the this museum was here when I was here, but I, I never once set foot in it <laughs> when I was actually stationed here. I do remember there being this museum here. I don't know that it had a, a, a B1 out in front of it. Uh, 83067. I, <laughs> I know there were two 06 mo seven something models that I worked on that were like really old. 
that they were just canning for parts a lot, although they rotated through a lot, so. I can see all the little parts of the plane that I worked on. <laughs> I can't tell you about them. But I recognize where I spent a lot of blood, sweat, and tears on this fucking thing. Oh, man. It's a little bit before my time. Ah, the old days. I am impressed that this is open during the pandemic. It says open on the door though. I, I don't think I've ever been in that building, so I'm gonna go in that building and see what I can see. I don't feel quite out of place vlogging here because everyone's pointing phones and shit in all kinds of places. I want to know what's in the building. This does, I, I can't believe how many memories have come flooding back of just different things that I experienced during the eight years that I was stationed here before I moved to Denver, which is on my list of trips, by the way, when it opens back up, if it opens back up. That says open, but I'm thinking it's not open open. Like, I think I'm just allowed to walk around out here. Museum galleries and gift shop are closing due to current health concerns. Yeah, sure enough. South Dakota never shut down, huh? My ass. They did. It's just you don't get in trouble for it. That's the only difference, you know, between South Dakota and the rest of the states I've visited is you're not going to get tasered for walking around. And no one's going to really bitch at you about not wearing a mask. So... But other than that, there's just as many things closed here. It's just as many uh, people social distancing and scared. And it's really not super different. Um, I will say some businesses are booming while others are not. Pretty much everything I used to visit or do when I was here all those many years ago is gone like the mall is almost a dead mall you know even if it were open completely you know there's like four or five stores open it's nowhere near what it was when i was here it seems like they've let all of the old stuff that was here when i was here die and built like all of the same shit you see everywhere else all over the country you know the best buy which is still closed here by the way i'm done with best buy fuck them you want to open your fucking room i mean why how is it different for me to walk around in best buy than it is for me to walk around in fucking walmart i mean tell explain to me the difference there i'm allowed to walk around walmart all fucking day but best buy nope you can't come in without a fucking appointment or in curbside only, and if you know what you want, well, guess what? If I know what I want, I'm going to fucking order it off Amazon, you dickheads. Good luck staying in business. Sorry, it's a little rant. You know, I realize they're a private business. They reserve the right to be afraid and not open. And I'm just fine with that. I love this helicopter is about to go fucking nuts here. Like, should I be worried that that's, like, moving around so much? I 
I feel like I'm gonna get injured as I walk closer to it. Can I look inside? It's not looking too good in there. A little dusty. This thing's really fucking moving in the wind. how old and rusted out this is. I feel like this was sitting on somebody's lawn before they made it a display. The Dairy Queen's open for drive through in case you wanted some fructose. But yeah, this used to be a, there used to be a sub shop here that I used to eat at when I was uh, stationed here. That's gone. All of that is de dead in there, you know, as far as businesses go. You got the True Value hardware store though. That, that's doing all right, looks like. Like I can't explain the emotions I'm feeling today. I, I mean, it's somewhere between I don't know, it's, it's kind of like a sadness. I wouldn't call it a depression. I don't know, it's, it's like there's dust getting kicked up from me being here. Um, so it's a lot, it's, it's actually a lot for me to deal with right now. I don't know. Unexpected too, like I didn't expect to remember all the shit I remember. And, think about all the things that I'm thinking about, but I don't know, we'll see. Well, I think I've walked around as many planes as I can right now. I mainly wanted to see the base as, close, as much as I could from out here. Like I see my old squadron, where the main building was, the main hangar where I was initially in there. I see a lot of the docks I used to work in. <laughs> Time to move on. I'm gonna go uh, sit down in a restaurant I think I saw Longhorn look like it was open. Texas Roadhouse was not open. So I'm going to go see if I can get me a fucking ribeye. If that don't work out, then there's always Applebee's, which I looked open. I just, I, it just mystifies me, you know. All of the press that was going nuts saying, South Dakota never open, it's gonna be an explosion, and mur, 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 mur. all of the fucking bullshit fake news about South Dakota. You got some people that are, you know, anti-lockdown going, it's like the Mecca of freedom. And I admit, I'm, I, that's one of the reasons I came here, was thinking it was, you know, it was a bastion of, of a place that was still free, but turns out the fear has taken root here just as much as any other state in the country. Now, there's no draconian laws, but that didn't really change the impact of, of COVID here. So, interesting.
trying to figure out how the fuck to get here, get into the memorial, because the sidewalks are all roped off. I'm like, really? Apparently, this sidewalk is okay, but the other sidewalks are infectious. So much construction. So the construction was, is insane up here right now, but I'll take it because they're open for free. So social distancing, kind of a thing, kind of not a thing, but uh, mostly not a thing it looked like, but it's not super crowded, which is good. Like parking lots are pretty empty and just a scattering of people. So fear is still winning in a lot of places, but, you know, I'm glad I got to do this. I was, I was a little worried that it was closed when I came up and one of the sidewalks was fucking roped off. But, uh, yeah, I'm glad I got to do this. And uh, now I'm going to head over to Crazy Horse and see what I can see there. 
Uh, Keystone is just a little tourist tr town between Rapid City and here. Completely under construction, miserable. Like, lots of touristy shit, you know. I really don't have enough time to do some of the touristy shit. Like, there was a bear country thing that I want to drive through. Don't know if I'll have time to do that. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow since it's a little bit closer and because I got to turn the car in tomorrow. But, uh, don't really have time for hiking, but I'm definitely going to be back maybe later in the summer, uh, 4th of July time. They're supposed to have fireworks here on the 4th of July, despite COVID. So I'll probably come back for that. Maybe do a little hiking in between. Um, that's if I can get routed here. I, I don't know that I can get routed here. So I'm going to try going to Denver, renting a car and then driving up here, maybe renting a minivan. I can throw a my backpacking shit in. So basically I'm gonna have to go pretty fucking minimalist if I do the car rental thing instead of the moving my car out this way. So, which is good, I need to practice backpacking even if it is in a vehicle. So, did buy a backpack, lighter weight, 15 degree bag, because it does get cold some places, and uh, a new tent, so. Did some shopping, supported the local economy, but I am trying to stand up a better, not 60 pound backpack situation. So we're talking bare minimum, bare essentials, bears and shit. Uh, let me get to Crazy Horse and see how that is. Murder fucking hornet outside my door. I don't like it. But I gotta stop and check this view out. I'm not gonna get the other camera out though because I'm a lazy piece of shit. Oh, oh, oh. Fucking murder hornet's on my ass. All right, now if I can get out without dying. Oh. Check that view out. There he is. GW. And shit. I wonder if I can climb on this. I might be breaking the rules. So a little bit of a drop here. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Can you take a picture of me? Absolutely. So it was interesting. I just had to help Maybe somebody to take selfies from California. Solar traveler from California. Also escaping the lockdown. Shit.
I really need more time. I didn't, I didn't budget enough fucking time here. climb all the way down. I'm, I need to get moving to get the crazy horse, but... Like, I'm enjoying this more than the Adirondacks, to be honest with you. Maybe, maybe I need to move further west. It's like a nice quiet moment. Let me head back to crazy. I'm sure I'm going to pull off a couple more times on the way. So this is Horse Thief Lake. And, uh... When I lived here so many years ago, I used to jump off that cliff into the water. And I was scared shitless. I went from like the very top jumping location. And uh, I don't know if they still allow it. I imagine as pussified as we are nowadays, it's probably frowned upon. Like, it's still too cold to go swimming, probably. But. I've camped at this lake a long time ago. I got a fine for it because I was a piece of shit. I've learned a lot since then. But, yeah, it's Horse Thief Lake, I believe is the name of the lake. Oh, that was a murder hornet. Fucking murder hornets. That brings back memories. I was terrified to jump off that fucking thing. Because there's two jumps. There's a higher one and a lower one. And you had to clear the lower one if you jump from the higher one. I had a bunch of friends that were going to leave me here if I, uh, if I didn't jump. They started hopping in the cars and leaving. But this is just past Mount Rushmore. Yeah. I don't know if anybody swims in this anymore. I know you used to, though. This dude's d dumping fish in the lake. So I, I guess fish aren't natural here, that they dump fish for, for the fishing people to do fishing shit over there. I need to learn to fish. So, uh, $12 to get in, no hiking allowed. There is a guided tour for $4, which I don't know if I got cash for. But yeah, fucking COVID. Actually, I think he said it's because of construction. There's no hiking. This thing, they've been working on this thing for fucking years. Oh my God. Like it looks, it didn't look like they make any progress from the last time I was here. It's like, what are they doing? And shit.
trying to take a selfie is kind of a pain in the ass. in the winter time gets below zero and in the summertime we get a lot of thunderstorms come through here and a lot of lightning because this mountain has got a lot of iron content in it it's drawn it draws lightning to it so they'll shut down if there's lightning within a 15 mile radius here of Custer ah, home sweet home which is the truck and shit So, uh, sorry, it's, it's a little warm in here still. That's why I got the truck running. So I finished my uh, trip to Crazy Horse. And I just wanted to kind of do some, like, after action report. Um, I could have gone up to the face, but they want $125 for a ride up there apparently hiking usually is only open in uh, two months out of the year to get up there uh, but this year might not happen at all so there wasn't a lot of people there and I was partially thankful for that but I also realized the economics of that um, but I did enjoy being the only person on the four dollar bus tour that that went there 
Uh, my only complaint is there's it. First of all, there's it. You know, I'm not worried about social distance and all that. It, it's just uh, I, I was questioning whether or not the the driver was sick. And it's close quarters. And this driver didn't, you know, have that personal space thing. So I think I gave my immune system a, a workout. Now, the reason I say this is because he has symptoms. He was coughing horribly bad. Now, he might just be a smoker or some shit. Um, you know, and, I, and he's a good dude. You know, I, if he sees this, I hope he's not pissy with it. But... Um, I was a little worried. I was a little concerned and, you know, but honestly, it, the, it was more like that same poisonous fear that we're all infected with. So it was probably nothing. And I have to remember the time where I would have thought nothing of it, to be honest with you, hearing somebody coughing and hacking. Now I seem like hyper vigilant about it. And I need to get past that, you know, if I'm ever going to be 100% normal again out here. Overall, today's trip was fucking badass. Um, definitely, a, like, better than yesterday uh, at South Dakota. So I would say, in terms of coming here and visiting there's still a lot to do like there's a lot of shit i want to do that i'm not just not going to have time uh there was a 50 dollars helicopter ride i don't you know apparently it's open because i saw the helicopter doing important helicopter shit so there's that there's a, a drive-through bear thing that i'm probably going to do tomorrow so i'll probably film that that'll be another video though um I'm, you know, while I've decided to not become a resident, I am still going to make it a point to return here multiple times to, to do some of the things that I want to do in the Black Hills. You know, as far as Rapid City and the whole being open thing and trying to feel normal, look, South Dakota may have been open the whole time. And the press wants you to believe that this is going to become a disease haven because it's open. But I'm here to tell you uh, it's not any more open than any of the other states that have uh, slowly been reopening. And they've voluntarily closed a lot of businesses. Um, or there's been local ordinances that have done so. Uh, so while the governor of South Dakota apparently did not put any measures in place. I feel that a lot of measures were put in place. Um, you can sit down in a restaurant and eat in South Dakota. It's going to be kind of a lonely experience I'm finding. Uh, every time I've sat down to eat, I do have a few more outings to do. I'm going, might go to Deadwood if I feel like it tonight. Um, just to see what casinos and, and bars are doing. I'm not going to drink, but I just want to know kind of how it is up there constructions out of control in all of these places so maybe they're just taking an opportunity because of the virus to get some much needed construction done I don't know but I did feel that that nature vibe when I was up in the Black Hills and uh, that, that made me feel a lot better than I did yesterday so in case you haven't gathered, I do struggle a little bit more with depression since my diet is shit. And I'm well aware of why I, I struggle with it. And it's because my diet is shit. Once I get back to normal, once I get back to keto for, which will probably be a little while yet, I anticipate being over the whole depression fucking thing entirely. So, but... Uh, as you can see, I'm sunburning, so I'm getting plenty of vitamin D to, to fight the virus. I recommend you do the same. I might have baked a little too much, so there'll be some peeling action in the coming videos, so enjoy that. It's very, very pleasing to watch me peel skin off my fucking fat head. Um, as far as fatness, I, you know, I feel fat. I don't know how fat I've gotten. 
And but my next trip will be to New York because I have some paperwork and some things I want to take care of there. Um, not because it's going to be open. When I say open, see, New York's just putting their big toe in the water while other people are up to the ball level of the cold water that is normal life. Uh, you know, so it's like a regression back, you know, where I have to go back to wearing a mask. Uh, masks are 100% optional here, and the majority of people don't wear them. Um, and you can just tell, you know... <laughs> See, what trips me out is people like to hate on people that don't wear their masks. When the majority of people aren't wearing them, the mask is useless. You might as well not wear it either. Uh, you know, enjoy your oxygen levels and shit. But, hey, what do I know? If it makes you feel better to walk around with a fucking mask on, as long as you don't make me do it, I'm fine. Obviously, I'm going to have to do it in New York and in a couple of the other super fucking fascist piece of shit fucking states and fucking Cuomo fuck sorry <laughs> but uh so I'm, I'm gonna keep paying my my New York State fucking tyranny fee for now I mean my you know but there's there might come a point where I do 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 decide to switch residency but for right now, I, I explored some of the options, uh, which is uh, where you there's like a mailbox type service place, and I was doing some some digging and searching, and I saw some things that I'm like, I don't know if I feel comfortable having any important mail sent there, um, or even using it to re-register a vehicle in another state just because I read reviews where there's mail in the dumpster instead of being shredded and and places will go out of business without any notice and next thing you know your address and is gone and you know I don't want to deal with any of that um, I still have the little room in in New York I still have my post office box in New York so I'm gonna probably just keep that as my residency for now but if New York doesn't change its tune you know, I'm, I look at it as I'm halfway voting with my feet because I am spending a decent amount of my money outside the state of New York um, and supporting the states that are open. And, you know, the more open a place is, the more I am inclined to support it. Um, for the, so for those businesses that are cowering in fear, they're just doing curbside or just want to keep shut down I'm sorry but I can't support you I will support the ones that are brave enough to open because there's plenty of them that do and that's where I'm at you know and of course I'm supporting waitresses waiters you know restaurant workers grocery store workers uh, you know I'm supporting a lot of local industry plus I'm supporting local tourism the and tourism slim pickings um, in terms of what's open and what isn't. But there are some spots open in South Dakota for doing touristy shit. But don't come here expecting the full Black Hills experience uh, because a lot of places are either really shut down or, you know, they even had the authoritarian, you know, social distance fucking voice at Crazy Horse which I thought kind of took away from the experience a bit. You know, I, I went there because I did not because I wanted to be reminded of COVID-19. I went there to escape the virus. So the last thing I want to hear is you should social distance. And by the way, social distancing was now there was closer than six feet. Multiple times I came within six feet of people um, just because of the size of the room or the size of the hallway or whatever. And uh, that that's fine. I'm fine with it. You know, we got to let our immune systems get back to work. Uh, and if you're not ready to do that, then you need to stay home. You need to, you know, take all the precautions, put yourself on lockdown. Just because a uh, place is in lockdown, one thing I've clearly seen in the states that are opening up, it doesn't mean they open up. It's not like, well, everything's open, unless it's Wisconsin. 
Uh, it's more like, okay, you can open, and then you got the first wave of, of businesses that are really hurting usually, and they're jumped in with both feet letting you in, and then you got the businesses that are hanging back because they, or the ones that just can't operate at half capacity. Um, that That's another thing. A lot of businesses won't open just because they can't, they're going to wait for the foot traffic to be there uh, before they you know start spending money and employing people and doing all of that uh so i see a lot of that that and i know a, a lot of businesses just won't open simply because they can't operate at half capacity with social distancing and stay afloat and uh so we're not uh, we're not going to be out of this economic fucking hot water for a while because if i'm here in the state that's been open the whole time telling you the shit isn't fucking normal here either um, it's a, it's a lot more, you can do a lot more here than in every other state I've been to, but it's still not normal. It's not open. Everyone isn't out frolicking. There's a lot of people out, but I'd say it's probably a good 50, 50 split on people that are out and about and people that are staying home. So we'll see. Cause I know from experience that crazy horse and Mount Rushmore are usually just packed no matter what day of the week and on a beautiful day like today while there was a decent amount of people there as you've seen in the video that's no that's nothing compared to a normal crowd up there so but fuck do I know anyway cuz I'm not a fucking expert I'm just a fucking asshole if you're not subscribed to me on LBRY you missed out. I put a video that I filmed in Nebraska up as an exclusive because I talk a lot of shit about social distancing on there. And uh, I invite you to go and hear that because it required free speech, which just means I couldn't post it here on YouTube. In the meantime, please like and subscribe on YouTube because I do plan on doing my adventure vlogs and my travel vlogs and my nomad fucking living in a tractor trailer vlogs right here on YouTube and also on LBRY, so you get all my videos on LBRY. You only get the ones I think Susan won't kick me in the balls and punch me in the face for here on YouTube, so I will continue to to do that, and, I, and I'm finding it's a, it's a good balance and that LBRY makes up for the shortcomings of YouTube for me, so best of both worlds, I guess, except YouTube doesn't give me any traffic or anything really you know, or exposure or boosts or subscribers or none of that. Still growing on LBRY, just saying. I'll probably hit 10,000 on LBRY before I hit 11,000 on YouTube. Just, just think of it, think of it, who knows? Or I'll just suck at this and maybe I'll just get fed up and stop vlogging someday. Don't worry, it's not on my radar, but you never know, you never know, life, as a way of changing things on you. Have a nice motherfucking day. Shit. The sunburn's gonna suck. What was I thinking? I'm so red. This is not good. Ugh. I still gotta go out again too. I'm, we're, I'm actually going out to eat with somebody I know from here, a friend of mine from here. So, yeah, there's that. So I'm going to have a sit-down meal with another human being. I don't know if the six-foot thing, how that's going to work, but... It's not like they don't know what's going on. It's all about informed consent. Just saying. Have a nice motherfucking day. Shit.